Okay, we're going to see how the camera works. I'm looking at a scene here that I put together for a logo. And uh, you can see I have some limits in how the camera can move. It uh, zooms in to a certain point and stops, and it zooms out to a certain point. I can go, I can go that far and no further. And there are several other um, things you can do. So let's take a look at that blend file and I will show you where the camera settings can be found. Make sure your your render settings are on blend for web. And then we're going to make sure our camera is selected and then come to the camera panel. And here are all the attributes that you can change for a camera. And so if we look at this camera I have here, we're going to come down to the bottom and look under camera limits. And so here is the distance limits. Um, I've got it set for a minimum of two units and a maximum of six. And that can be, if it's unchecked, it, it just is infinite so that they can just whiz off into space until they can't see anything. Now the horizontal rotation clamping, this, I set these to world, uh, to world space. They were camera space and I, I got confused and my thinker started to hurt. So I changed it to world space and it made it a little bit easier to understand. Once you get a handle on how it works, it's not that complicated. But while you're, while you're trying to figure it out, if you're me, um, you get a little confused at first. But what you want to do here is so the horizontal rotation clamping we're going to put the negative number on the left and the positive number on the right. If you get that backwards, let's say I had it uh, 10 degrees on the left and negative 10 degrees on the right, what would happen is, is you could rotate 370 degrees in one direction and 370 degrees in the other direction, which is, which is more than fully rotating before it finally stops. So that can be a little confusing. So if you if you're not sure how to make it work, then then put uh, put a zero here, and then start messing with a number here until you understand that, and then and then uh, go ahead and change the number here. Start incrementing it into the negative to get uh, the rotation you're looking for. And it goes the same with up and down. Um, you'll want your I have a, a 30 degree down angle and a 90 degree up angle, so you'll just put your degrees in and if you if you get confused just start with small numbers until it and start incrementing them until you kind of get a handle on where that puts your camera and this setting here use panning mode what that does is it allows you to scoot the camera around so I'm going to allow that to be um, to be checked and I'll do a quick export and show you what panning is so we'll export that and I'll refresh this and I'm gonna right click and drag and so I can just start dragging until my scene is just gone and depending on what you're trying to display that might work for you but for my little logo here I didn't want to do that so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and undo that and let's see, we want to talk about, um, here are some of the move velocities. I've left all those the same. And the target location, so that's an important one. Um, what you can do for the target location, so right now it's at 0, 0, 0 where the cursor is now. To get an idea where it's going to go, you can just take, uh, take a little sphere there. And we'll just scale it down. And I'm going to come up here and just make, click on the camera icon next to that object and that's going to make it so it doesn't render but it gives you an idea where the camera is going to be rotating around and if you wanted to change that you could put the cursor anywhere you want and then just hit copy cursor location and it would it would copy the cursor's location to be where the camera's centering and if I hit my I'm going to hit my zero key and then I'm going to lock camera to view now I can move my camera around, but once the scene loads, it's going to snap it to within the bounds that I've specified. For example, I could throw the camera way back here, but as soon as the scene loads, it's going to snap it up close to where, um, so it's within the bounds that I showed. And 
by the same token, if I point the camera in a different direction, when the scene loads, the camera will be here at this location, but it's going to be snapped to, to the center where it's looking. So if you're trying to get your camera positioned properly, for example, if I wanted this to load and then have the camera looking up at this, then I could scoot it down like this. And as long as my camera's pointing to where I can see my center is going to be, um, that's where it will end up. If I end up pointing off here somewhere, it will it will snap back to there. So you can manually position your camera wherever you want, but keep in mind that the settings that you have input here will be um, snapped into place once the scene loads. Um, while we're looking at this, uh, I do need to give credit where credit is due. This water effect is a really cool thing that came from Pavel Kotov. Kotov? Gosh, I hope I pronounced that right. He posted this blend in the uh, Blend for Web forum. And so I, I changed the color on it a little bit. But other than that, um, he created this water. I'm going to need to dissect it. And uh, once I fully understand it, I'll probably do a video just on that. But anyway, that water is pretty cool. So thanks, Pavel. And another camera trick that you might want to be aware of is what if you want the scene to load with an auto rotate feature and the way this is done is actually nothing in in blender it, it's done in the address so if you look right up here i've added something onto the address and this the player is made to accept an argument after um, the url so if i go ahead and refresh this with that with that question mark auto rotate it's going to load the scene with auto rotate rotate active and once someone clicks and does anything it will just cancel that and if they wanted to turn it back on you could do it right there and it'll just auto rotate and you can zoom without interrupting the auto rotate but that's helpful and if you look in the um, documentation there's a few other uh, arguments you can pass um, for various things but this is related to what the camera does and the behavior of the camera so I thought I would include that here and there's one more feature um, the rotate function if your camera is clamped at certain degrees then what the rotate function will do is just oscillate between the two clamp points and that can be useful too so here you can see I've got it set to just auto rotate and it goes to the point where it was clamped it looks like it's eased very nicely too it doesn't just slam against your limit and then reverse it has a nice eased effect um, so if I was going to link to this and I wanted it to do that I would type in question mark auto rotate and then it would just load with the auto rotate active and let's see if there's anything else I should cover oh yes um, clipping so clipping means if something's too far away from the camera it won't render so if I l made that 10 which is very close to the camera and we rendered that out to see what it did Let's refresh that. Oh, my ball still renders. That's interesting. So anything that's far too far away from the camera just won't render now. You can see that line right there. That is 10 units beyond the, um, the camera. So it, it will no longer render. So we can change that. And, and so our ball actually did render. So that is interesting. Um, maybe... Where is that ball? Sphere. Yeah, it's it's clicked off. So in normal Blender modes, that prevents it from rendering. So apparently that feature isn't currently supported on the Blend for Web export. That that's probably something that'll end up in there eventually. But I don't need that there. That's just sort of a visual aid. So I can go ahead and get rid of that.
Uh, I should also mention there are some different camera move styles. So right here, if you go to move styles, um, so far what I've shown you is target. So static is what you would use if you wanted to, say, put the camera in an animation and animate the camera yourself without allowing the user to have a say in it. Um, also, the eye in that in that uh, mode it just looks around from the beginning and the hover allows you to uh, sort of pan around and there's a good way to see an example of those there's one included in the SDK so if you come to the render settings and hit open SDK and we're gonna come down here to camera camera move styles and so you can open that up and you can click here for the static camera and of course it does nothing doesn't zoom doesn't pan and here's the eye camera there's no zooming in and out and it doesn't move it just stays in one position but it it moves around and in this example you can see it's clamped to a certain degree there and it's clamped to a certain degree there and so that's the there's a target camera and the target camera allows you to zoom in and out and then rotate around and you can see it's it's clamped there if you didn't have the clamp settings on it could just go 360 degrees unlimited and so let's take a look at the hover camera and the hover camera does have some zoom in and out and then it allows you to basically travel you can drag the scene and just sort of travel around and that can be useful um, for various styles of display that you wanted to do and that that allows you to kind of translate across your scene there. So that's a good way to get a quick handle on what the camera styles do and that should uh, get you going on some of your projects I hope.